I just remember as a child in my little saddle shoes, you know, wobbling across the cobblestone and being so excited because it was such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful place. The historic significance is unquestionable. Baltimoreans were so proud of the fact that they were dedicating the first monument to George Washington in this country. And it kind of speaks to the whole American experience. This place since the very earliest years of the Republic has been linked to important leaders. It speaks to um, very important chapters of our nation's history and our nation's heritage. It was thought to be a, a marvel of its day in the scheme of things because it was so large. And when John Eager Howard, who had donated the land for the monument itself, died in 1827, his heirs decided to expand the area around the monument uh, that would be a public space. This cruciform pattern is actually quite an astoundingly original and innovative way of designing a public space. The squares um, also have a wonderfully public quality to them. They're not private or in an out-of-the-way neighborhood. They're front and center. And I find these, these four parks, and, and as I say, close to the theater and close to, to the conservatoire, I, I, I find it a place of beauty and of peace. And, uh, and in an urban setting, you know, that makes it even better. It's just such an unusually highly designed space for the United States. I mean, they were really forward thinking when they laid out these squares in the 1830s. And in many respects, I think of the park as like a museum without walls. There is no other place in Baltimore that reaches that far back in history in such a public way. And I think it's like a lot of things in life, if they gradually deteriorate, you never know exactly when they've crossed the line of shamefulness, so to speak. There's been no major investment in Mount Vernon Place as far as the plantings go in, in at least three or four decades. There's no um, care, there's no uh, uh, attention to detail. It's like a wonderful picture with a lousy hardware store frame put on it. And all the marble work is now almost 100 years old. Some of the balustrades over time have been hit by cars. They have missing mortar cracks and things like that. The sidewalks are heaving and cracked and broken. Where the park really needs uh, the help is in its planting and its sort of soft uh, landscape. It's just almost impossible to maintain things in Mount Vernon Place because the soil and water conditions are so poor. Currently in the East Square, for instance, uh, the fountain often doesn't function because the drains are clogged with tree roots, and that's because no one designed how they planted them. It is in terrible shape. That is a fact. We as a city should not put up with that. It is, it's too precious a spot, too special a location to be treated the way we treat it. The challenge here for Mount Vernon Place is to maintain the integrity of the basic spatial structure of the design while bringing in modern technology in order to make this place uh, alive for the future. The pressures on a park in the 21st century are very different from those in the 19th and early 20th century. It's undoubtedly much hotter, there's more cars, there's heavier use now than there was originally. All of these elements require more work underground to make what is above ground thrive. We are looking to use those technologies that we now know uh, how to create the most healthy uh, conditions for plant growth, for trees. Aspects that were not really known uh, you know, 100 years ago. Uh, there's nothing like beautifully groomed gardens and trees to make you stop and think about what you have there. It's, it's, it's the icing on the cake. It's the sparkle to the diamond ring. The Conservancy is embarking upon a restoration of the Washington Monument first because of its upcoming bicentennial in 2015. With the monument uh, approaching its 200th birthday, this is the moment when it would be ideal for us to intervene and mitigate any sort of acceleration of deterioration. It's just such a huge piece of sculpture that there, there's lots of work just to kind of you know get it back to a good baseline for the next hundred years. It's all about 
keeping water out of the building. It's keeping water out of the stones. Even though the walls are four feet thick, they can hold a certain amount of water, but when their capacity has been reached, it'll move to the inside. And so there's some interior uh, historic finishes that have clearly been damaged over the years. Another big part of the monument work that needs to be accomplished is that the offense is, is in really pretty tough condition. It is very difficult to replace, obviously, an 1800s brick, but it's impossible to replace the 1800s story. And so the things that have happened within this square, the things that this square seeks to commemorate, that's all a part of its embodied culture. Letting it go feels like a missed opportunity to do the right thing at the right time. The new image that can be created here is going to register not just here at home, but nationally and even internationally because of the stature of the designers we're dealing with. Olin is renowned for their very elegant um, convergence of both a sensitivity to the historic fabric as well as leaders in the sustainable movement. Uh, they are recognized internationally as being one of the leading firms in that work today. So in many ways it continues the tradition of Mount Vernon Place where we've always had leading professionals. Robert Mills was an architect of the Capitol. Olmsted was the father of American landscape architecture. Creer and Hastings was a top of the field in the city beautiful movement. Olin is top in the field of landscape and landscape preservation today. These historic places, their sort of infrastructure needs to be helped to be able to withstand the pressures of uh, contemporary life and retain their integrity. So this is a plan that is for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and it really requires us to dig deep inside to be able to create that infrastructure that will assure it for you know, the long term. The Conservancy was founded on the notion that Mount Vernon Place should be a destination in its own right. It's important for visitors to know that we have more than the harbor. The harbor is a very special place, but they need to get out beyond the harbor. Improving the parks and monument will bring a lot more visitors to Charles Street. Um, and the spin-off activity will be seen by the restaurants and retailers in the corridor. It's clearly in the best interest of employers to invest in public spaces, not just immediately outside their doorstep, but beyond, like in Mount Vernon. Well, high quality urban amenities like a renovated green space are really what developers are looking for. What we have here, in terms of 19th century architecture, obviously the park, and the history and traditions and the cultural assets that are right on the park is almost without parallel in the United States. It is just incredible. To protect it as, as a place where people come together as a city uh, to celebrate, you know, we need to continue to have that place, not just for today, but to continue to tell Baltimore's story uh, in the future. And in order to do that, we have to make those investments.